welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Live from the Blizzard Arena, we're going to be getting into our matches of the day here. I'm Semler with me as Hank Cinda. Well, that was the halftime show. Thank you, Josh, for saying my joke. I appreciate you, bro. Pre-game show. Good looking out for it. Oh, yeah, that was pre-game. We're so used You're to getting ahead of yourself. Up here. Yeah, yeah, we're so used to saying the halftime. It's all good. Game. That was the pre-game show. It was good, as always. Josh used my joke. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Good man. I didn't hear it. You didn't hear it? No, I'm sure it was terrible. Come on, man. It was awesome. <laughs> but let's go ahead and just, you know, we'll dodge that because it's already been heard on the stream. Washington, they're so hot right now. Yes, uh, Washington and Atlanta are both really playing well in this stage specifically. Here's the stage four schedule for your Washington Justice who are a bottom tier team in the first three stages, but now they get to play damage dealers. You got guys like Erster coming, to, er, excuse me, that's the other team. You got guys like Corey and Stratus <laughs> rocking to this team and they play the Rain and the Eternal looking for that perfect stage. Yeah, they're looking good, man. Corey, frozen in time, just like his opponents. He keeps putting them six feet under and that's pretty much it. The end of the story. But, uh, he's balanced well by Stratus on the side. You've got the double damage dealers. We've been talking about this so far in this stage, how you can have one guy hard carry like Erster, but you're going to get the furthest if you can have two that are at the same level. Yeah, it looks yeah. like the both of them right now are looking really good. You definitely need the duos. They both have these amazing frag videos that we've aired the last couple of weeks. If you haven't seen them, go look those up right now. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Corey's been super clutch. Here are your stage four standings. The Washington Justice at the top. Unfortunately for them, no hex. They are at the top. But yeah, they, that's it. They're at the top. Absolutely. But unfortunately for them, we don't have a stage four playoff sequence there. You know, we're just going to go right into the playoffs here. So, but it's still big for them to be able to go through. They're having a lot more fun. There's been yeah. interviews with the guys the last couple of days, and they're just really enjoying this stage. And look, the organization, I think, from the top down is making the correct moves as far as roster signings, GM signings. The Justice have really put together a good squad, and the results are right there on your screen. You know, most of us want to live in fantasy world text, and, you know, for, Production are going to go ahead and put those season standings up, and I'm going to have to be confronted with the reality of Washington Justice at the bottom, yeah. <laughs> 19th in the season standings. Seven but total wins. But for a second wins. there, yeah. we could have we could have imagined Washington Seven, yeah. at the top. Seven total wins. Of course, five of those have come this stage, but you also need to talk about the Atlanta Reign. They're 12 and 12. They're sitting at 10th place right now. I believe they're one of three teams remaining that can move up to the top six, but they really just need to lock in their spot for the top 12 here to make sure they get into the play-in, and they've been extremely extremely hot at this stage. They haven't played in a bit, but here's how they get to the postseason. Two wins, or one win and a Chengdu loss. And I don't want to think about that one because I'm been, uh, I've been on the Panda Express the entire year. I know, it's so tasty and it's so entertaining. But, but well, let's go ahead and get our first team out onto the stage, Hex, and we'll go ahead and uh, be getting into that in just a moment, in fact, as we come back and look at our lovely sweater on sweater action. But I think our team is ready to go. We're going to get our first ones out there. Washington Justice on the stage. A lot of swag walking towards that stage right now. They just look so much happier than they did in the previous meta. They never really put it together when we were running three tanks and three supports. But now you've got Corey playing the Hanzo. And on the eye test, he's one of the best Hanzos in the league. The numbers don't suss that out as we're going to have the actual best number in the league Hanzo as their opponents. But looks good. How can you talk about anything apart from how smooth Stratus is with that, <laughs> those glasses games? Stratus. That's impressive, man. Good work on you. That's going to be a gift. That's going to be clipped and used because that was so clean. It takes a special kind of smooth to be able to rock the center part haircut, but Stratus able to pull it off there. And yeah, this team has looked really good. I thought Sansam had played a lot better in the last hit. And then their support line has been playing really, really well. Mm -hmm. They're coming together finally here at the end of the stage. It gives them hope going into 2020 for sure. But now we're going to get their opponents out onto the stage. The Atlanta Reign. Atlanta Rain running the peaches out onto the stage. That means a whole different thing now, Hex. <laughs> I, I don't speak emoji, so don't hold that one against me. Of course, you have uh, the likes of a lot of good damage dealers on this squad here, and they're trying to lock in a top six place. Baby Bay is going to be there, but it's been so much about Erster. you got to give the scouting for this team a lot of credit because Erster comes from a team that was in the Pacific region of contenders, a team called Lucky. Uh, Lucky Future Zenith, that team had Diem on it, Marvel, Michelle, IDK, Lucid, and how these guys flew under the radar is ridiculous, but Erster is the number one Hanzo in every single measurable statistic in the league. Yeah, we saw that on the half on the halftime show. It got appropriate reaction. Essentially, everybody was losing their minds. But 
that's a pretty dominant performance in stage four for a player to be number one in the league. There you go, Atlanta Rain, a big reason why perhaps they are dominating. We also saw some sick Genji from him. He nearly got an ace on Anubis. I keep bringing it up because it's so darn rare yeah. to actually see a player nearly wipe out an, an enemy team single-handedly. We were looking at some of the Genji stats earlier in our stat sheet from our mastermind, Ben Troutman, the Captain Planet. The and, Trout. And he kind of said, he showed me these uh, these Genji statistics. He's like, you kind of have to ignore it because they're so far out. They're so far on the other side of things that you'd think they're going to come back to Earth here. But this is the matchup we're going to look at. The Hanzos have been so important in this current meta. Corey and Erster, probably the two best Hanzos in the league. And I don't really think you can find an argument against it. I've been lied to, Hex. What's this? I thought he was number one in every metric, but critical hits, he's below Corey. What's it, going on here? Not every metric, most metrics. Come on, why you gotta be so dancing about it? We cherry pick here? everything. <laughs> I'm being sold a false narrative. I thought we were looking at a god. Turns out he's merely mortal. Presented by a Toyota, our map set, Busan. We'll be kicking things off with our control, as well as Hanamura to follow after this. So. Busan, three points, king of the hill. We're looking for the first team to 100%, then we'll control that point, and we'll move on. Best of three. Yeah, we talked so much about the Hanzos, and we will continue to do so throughout the day. Also, there's going to be Widows, but I really want to look at the Batiste on both sides. Ark and Masa, two of the best Batiste in the entire league. Masa is crushing. He does so much damage on Batiste by the numbers. Leads everybody in final blows per 10 on that hero. So Masa on the Batiste, Ark on the Batiste, we're in for a treat with these two. Yeah, they're solid, and well, Batiste just becoming more and more of a key player here, a key role in these teams, and mainly due to the Lancer. You're going to keep calling him the Lancer just because it looks like one. But it's so important to get that down and to deny the ability of your opponents to kill anybody on your team. That's where you're seeing it. FRD taking a snooze right off the bat. That's what we're waiting for. Baby Bay opening up the show with a headshot on Corey. Strat is dead as well, and that's the Atlanta Rain. Hitting the ground running here. It's going to be so important for Atlanta if they want to win this matchup to be able to at least contest in the Widowmaker. You would think that Corey would have the advantage here, and Atlanta has been running a couple of different players on the Widowmaker. Of course, Baby Bay in it now. And Lair will also come in and play it too, but that's an enormous opening pick for them. They will grab first control, the Atlanta Reign, 20% and counting up. Just keeping it together, but that could very well. We weren't seeing it from Baby Bay's perspective, unfortunately, but it could just be him getting the drop on Corey, so we're not going to read too much into it. First blood has been drawn, first engagement, but we got a long series ahead of us here. Plenty of opportunity for Corey to come into his own. So Corey trying to take over this position from Baby Bay right now. Now he's got eyes on the point, but they're doing a good job on the side of the rain. Not really giving him too many targets to play with. Yeah, well, Sansam has completely zoned out Baby Bay. He's hunting him in the back line on this Roadhog, and he's trying to get Baby Bay out of position so that Corey can retake this position. He does just that. <laughs> Clever stuff. Hiding as best he can. Does he actually get a shot off, though? Baby Bay gonna go down. That's Guido. Well, taking care of the Widow, so now he doesn't even have to worry about anything on the side of Corey. He gets to run in here and have all the fun he wants. Walls over the top, getting rid of the Lantern. There we go. That's the key. So success in team fights now, you have to just negate that field, get rid of it so that things can actually die. The kill on Baby Bay is really critical there because they don't really send Corey out there. Trying to be the attacking widow into a team that has control, not always the best of ideas. Baby Bay comes back with a nice fight, but previously it was two people trying to funnel Baby Bay into a corner and they got the early kill. Baby Bay comes back with a vengeance though. Infrasight up, he's able to get that kill, gabs himself another yep. two quick kills from the Baby Bay. That's unfortunate on our side as well, because they knew where Baby Bay was playing from. You saw the call out, you saw him get spotted, everybody closed the angles, and then Baby Bay still finds a kill. So a man advantage now for the Atlanta Rain, looking to flip this back their way, and they will get it. 64% of counting, and they are getting all the kills here. Cleanup kills are really important. They're trying to get these Ana on the way out as well. One ice full hits, not two. So they will be able to hold on to this. And now at 75%, Atlanta Rain in a really good position to win this next fight, and thus the first point, because Erster's got Blizzard on the ready, and any sort of pushback even though that Washington doesn't have any, would be negated by Dogman, who's got Transcendence ready to go. So Atlanta in a perfect position to take our first point. Yeah, looking good. And it's Atlanta right now who have everything to lose. You know, despite the memes at the beginning, Washington Justice, they're looking good stage four, but there are no stage four playoffs, and they are definitely not in the running for the actual playoffs that will be playing out after stage four. So Atlanta Reign are the ones who are fighting for it. Atlanta Reign are the ones who need to get the win, so they will have a little bit of an additional pressure on them here today. 99% though, looking good for Atlanta. Stratus 
chiming in, but FRD there with the trade, and it is looking like Baby Bay on the flank, trying to catch out those squishies. Super early, Blizzard does get one, though, and even though they were able to sleep Dogman, I don't think there's enough here for Washington to get back into the point. There is not, and Atlanta wins the first point of Busan. Yeah, sick whole hog as well. And it's worth keeping an eye on Roadhogs, and just keep in mind that you could go for the hog and try and get kills. But what we're seeing a lot of these Roadhogs do is they're getting wise with the timing and they're using the whole hog to push players off of payloads or off of, a, off of points and allow them to not contest, essentially keep them from contesting. And we saw that right there. It's an objective-based game. We've seen some of the best teams really just focus on objectives. You think about Guangzhou, you think about even Hangzhou and how they're playing these matchups here. They're not necessarily going for kills. They understand what actually wins you maps and it's usually objective control stalls, timing out, things like that. So some interesting strategies have come in. Let's see if Corey wants to run the Widowmaker. I was doing some research earlier. Widowmaker is involved in the top three best compositions right now in the Overwatch League. Mm -hmm. Top three most fight winning compositions all involve a Widowmaker. You know what happens though? Or this is just as old as sin in terms of uh, sniper play. It's 100% confidence. Yep. And so, yeah, okay, you're gonna win a lot if you've got a guy who's confident who's gonna hit his shots and get out there and make the big plays for your team. If you feel like you don't have a Widow who can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, who's gonna get shut down by the likes of Corey, then you're not running, you're not running it. And so right now, we're gonna see Atlanta Rain. They've elected to go Widowless. Yeah, they're going to go into what is pretty much the most prominent meta. Uh, they don't get there on time to contest, so that's a free first control going over to the Washington Justice, but Atlanta Rain running a much more stout and sustainable composition, the DPS Goats variant. Man, Baby Bay is so incredibly lucky there. He eventually dies. Corey will get the shot done. And there we go. Corey shutting down the damage dealers and getting a third as well. Poke Poe out of it. It's Masa who's there. And uh, as far as the offense is concerned, they get rebuffed. Atlanta Rain is sent back to spawn. Washington Justice will be the ones holding. It's always been such a great map for Widow at this point in particular. Because of that high ground, it's very difficult to contest by any other heroes. You really kind of need a Widow to get them off of it. So he takes the skyscraper angle, drops down. That's about as easy as they get. Shows up in the kill feed. The next flick onto Erster. It's a skill shot right there. Baby Bay goes down early again to Corey, and he has come alive after well, actually getting less done than Baby Bay on the very first point. Yeah, he had a really rough start to this game. Baby Bay got the jump on him and then never really got his feet after that. So, Corey, uh, this is it. This, we're going to see. Does he have to stay power here, Hex, when things get rough? Does he have the grit to push on through and take control? Well, he's forced Baby Bay onto the Widow just to be able to put some pressure on it. A really nice eat early on. Stratus' Blizzard goes nowhere. Yeah, that's big. FRD. Making the plays. He made the plays as Hog on the first point. Now he's coming in here trying to get it done. Corey, though, not going to give up. Still with the fight. And Corey, double kill for him. Janice chimes in with a kill on Masa. And that is the Atlanta Reign resetting as quickly as possible. They still have time for a final fight, but it's going to be cutting it close. A full reset. Atlanta can get in here and maybe open up some space with a self destruct. Try to get a set point on the point with Popo. Drop that supercharger. Buy enough time for Urser to get to Blizzard. But Stratus on the other side of things going to have another Blizzard. Hopefully, this one will actually find the ground. Does Corey get caught? I mean, he doesn't really care. He's got the shield. Hit backing off was a bit risky there if uh, Baby Bay had the high ground. But then Baby Bay gets slapped. So now he knows where they're coming from. He's going to be taking pot shots at him all day long. And that sets it up. The tag on Erster. Poke Poke goes. And that is three down already for the Atlanta Reign in this final push. And they are going to get sent packing Hex. A flawless play here on the second point from Washington Justice. They will take it 100 to 0 and we'll go to a third point, the final. It's time to go to Mecha Base on Busan now as this is starting to live up to the expectations. If you would have told me in stage one that I was going to be super excited for Washington versus Atlanta, I flat out would not have believed you. But I've been looking forward to this match for a couple of weeks because these teams have been playing out of their mind. Atlanta with everything to play for. Washington Quite literally the hottest team in the Overwatch League right now, trying to play spoiler. They want to end their season undefeated in Stage 4. Yeah, give them something to work with. Atlanta are the ones who do not want to be put in that position. They need two wins to get into the playoff run. Otherwise, they're going to need that one win and then rely on another team to lose. And that's terrible. When you have to sit there, it's not even in your hands. And especially if it's Chengdu, who are capable of taking anybody to task in the league. Not fun at all if you're Atlanta. So Atlanta, a little bit of pressure here. They got to get the job done. Yeah, they have four more matches. They have to win two. They've got Atlanta, I believe London. Dallas is on the docket, maybe even Boston, if I'm remembering correctly. So some winnable stuff forward. Yes. But you'd like to just take care of it today. Yeah. Yeah. All right, crossing out. And again, Baby Bay not willing to go Widow at the beginning. 
This is really just Washington trusting, knowing that they've got the carry potential here in Corey. I like to see it. Corey has been hitting shots. He's got the faith of his team behind him, and he's clearly taking advantage of it, showing him that it's not misplaced. Looking for that opening shot here to kick things off, trying to get on the squishies. Moira, not an easy target to hit, though, so he's electing to go for some tanks. But that's Baby Bay, who's going to win out in the end, traded back and forth, but still they're under pressure here on the side of the Washington Justice, and Dogman is going to pull the trigger. Uh, that's really what you benefit from running a Moira, and that's actually kind of Corey's fault that that Coalescence came up early, is because he's pumping damage into tanks, but that damage is healed up immediately by Moira. You look at the discrepancy between the Coalescence timings, Dogman already got his off, Guido only sitting at 80%. Oh, buddy, FRD getting a bit greedy here. That was unfortunate because now he's gonna be without a mech. Could get staggered. This could be big. Potential for two kills. Not quite gonna find it. Holds back in. And now they're going in for it. They've got the coalescence on their side, Washington Justice. Keto trying to take advantage of it. Sansep is still hanging out. He's got that self-destruct, but that's two kills coming through, and it's Corey making the plays. Two fist doubles. I mean, it's, it's a nice double, but this one is still not over. And remember, Atlanta still in control of the point right now. They're happy to make these trades. And now the trades fall completely in their favor. A late self-destruct, not gonna get anything done. And though Corey came in to get two, the trades come back really strong for Atlanta. Baby Bay was able to isolate Guido there. Now Atlanta in a really good position. This can be such a good map for Death Blossoms too because the teleport locations are really strong. Wall-ins, we've seen complete aces from Reapers on this point before. Now, yeah. got so much throughput now. Sound Bayer's there, they we're kicking it off. Dogman gonna rob him of the ace, but he might still be able to chime in and pick up five if he's active here, Baby Bay. Put the Blossom out there only to throw things out of whack for the Washington Justice, but we're up to 80% now for Atlanta Reign. This is final fight territory. Washington Justice calling for the reset, getting out. They're gonna get out, but this is not gonna be a good fight for them. They don't have a whole lot to be able to push in on this. Corey's gonna have an ultimate, but it's one of the kind of worst ultimates in the game as far as initiation. Yeah. Doomfist is mostly just on the escape. They're gonna have to pump in with Coalescence, huh. maybe get a set point with Supercharger. That's it, that's your best bet. That's it? Yeah, that is your best bet. The perfect play there from Sansam in the end. Or was it Sansom? No, it was FRD. Of course it was FRD. What am I saying? Yeah. FRD making the play with the body block. Body at the block end on there. Arc. That was the play that just kept him from being able to contest. The Maywall going up to block out Sansam. Just perfect. Now the wall comes up at the end too, and that's what May is so good at from denying the other team to even get in. Atlanta is trying to take care of business today here. We'll see if they can continue in map two. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
Oh, sick. Winston with the mustache. Hex, I didn't know I needed that. Everyone's been calling what? it the Freddie Mercury mustache, but everyone's looking over the Johnny Depp glasses he's got, too. Yeah. No, it's, uh, you know, it's good glasses. Shades are on point. It's sick. That, like, the man knows. Winston gets all the best skins. Winston and Tracer always get the best skins in this game. Zen exactly. Bag, maybe. Yeah. You can still buy, or they're going to come up. I think it was August 29th there. But uh, you guys, be sure to visit the website or get it in-game. Limited time. Limited I always time have to set a calendar in. for skins that are limited time, because I always forget it's a day after, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, I missed it. I always love those. Uh, well, I mean, that's just what what's reminding me of that there. It's just uh, in that era, those pilots, you know, mm -hmm. just getting their hair cut and stuff on the tarmac because they couldn't leave. Yeah. So, you know, just reading the newspaper, barber, you know, doing the hair. Oh, got to go back up in the plane and yeah. defend the country. I was Another great ballers. skin from our designers there. Yeah, that's uh, the championship skin. Both of these teams, well, one of these teams, rather, vying to get into the playoffs of the championship. Atlanta opened it up very nicely there. Again, there's still a shot Atlanta ends up in a top six situation, but they just want to win a couple games, make sure that they're in the playoffs, and they're a very dangerous team right now because you've got guys like Urster we've highlighted very well. The rest of the team rock solid, and then at times you get great play from Baby Bay as well. He's able to bust out that widow. There's never been a doubt about Baby Bay's mechanics, and if he can pull it off in this meta, it should be really interesting for the Atlanta Reign going forward. We move on to Hanamura. Both these teams one and two on this map. Washington trying to bring it back. Atlanta trying to take care of business. Exactly. So far, so far, looking pretty good on the side of Atlanta Reign. So, they won on control. Now we're going to get into a bit more structured play here on Assault. And we'll see. A little bit of damage there initially, but uh, nothing crazy. Waiting for it. This is almost like uh, the Slambulance or something, or like the Big Beef. Just get to Lucio and speed boost your way on in. Well, the wall does cut them in half a little bit, but the two people that cut off have vertical mobility, so they're able to get four in very quickly. Ooh, that's tough to lose Arc. That's a lot of the healing gone. I mean, you still got Guido on the Ana, fair enough, but he's out of position, and he got caught by Masa. Cursed. This is not looking too healthy here for the defense. Washington just is at risk of just getting overwhelmed with the first push coming in from Atlanta Rain. What excellent work here from the Rain. So it's really nice the positioning they had on their boosted squad up front because the two people who got cut off already up front were their tanks with no mobility. The people behind, who they set behind, were their Lucio and their D.Va. So the wall comes up, Lucio just roller skates over it, D.Va boosts over it. So the wall essentially did nothing in trying to cut them off. They still get the four in that they wanted to get in there. So it's really nice positioning to set up that boost to get in. And then you have everybody there, the wall does nothing, and that's how you take first point and clean as they did. That's as good as it gets. Textbook. Textbook thought out play there. And so five and a half minutes on the clock to pick up the second point. Atlanta Reign right now. Looking in good position. Once again, straight up here. There will be a wall going up, but uh, it's not the end of the world here, it seems. Washington just is trying to do the best they can with the fight, but we're going to get a blizzard thrown in. FRD got frozen. Poco's out as well. This is enough, perhaps. This is so clean. Can they get on the point quickly? Well, no, Atlanta just gets absolutely booped right there. They get blizzarded in the corner. It's, uh, it's the old Hanamura corner. This is so confusing to me, actually. My brain is just having so much trouble because it's red and red. Yeah, the color. The color scheme does break the brain sometimes. Dragon Strike will push up through the doorway. They have to back up. They back up right into the blizzard, and they're not in their their Arctic gear right there, so they get absolutely cleaned up. You know, we talked about a little bit yesterday when you, uh, you know, spill the beans and it's just my least favorite map, and it's because of right here. Because that happens to you all the time when the offense trying to get in there, you get walled off, and then there's ultimates coming over the place, and you're fighting in a hallway. Don't worry, Hex, I'm sure you're not alone, and it's, at least it's not a basement. So, <laughs> they're getting in. Nades are in again here. Atlanta Reign just rinse and repeat. They're getting mowed down. Washington Justice this time. But the Washington Justice committed a whole lot yeah. to that fight, and Atlanta Reign, that is pretty much an eco push that they threw in. Yep. Eco push comes in, and Atlanta doesn't have to use anything on this push. They're going to have a Blizzard of their own, also a Death Blossom here. It's just a matter of trying to get in here as clean as possible. You might have to just toss in the Blizzard just to get some space. Uh, a Dragon wouldn't be bad for them, but they're not on the Hanzo just to get in here. But now there's going to be another Dragon for Corey already. Yeah, and he's getting good support from his team there. You see shield positioning getting thrown in by Janice, allowing Corey to take these shots. Just putting the Atlanta Rain on notice. Nice bait! And the wall goes off. That should be a dead bait. No, it's not a baby bait because Urster had the ice block, so never mind. Thought for a second he would get overwhelmed, but will survive it. Immortality must be nice. Oh, baby Bay, Urster, everybody so low on the side of Atlanta. Let's see if they can squeak this out. The sound barrier used by Masa. Yeah, Atlanta's in, and they still have their big important damage alts. Or they had Baby Bay instantly gift. He's gone. Tried to go for the Blossom. Insta-killed is what happens to him. 
And now you still got the Justice hanging in here. We need a kill to come in quick for the Atlanta Rain. I but think it might be time to leave for the Rain. You gotta get this one so clean. Ursters holding on to this Blizzard knowing that they will get a couple of late kills, but it's time to retreat. Dogman's not gonna be able to get out. He had already used Fade, so Giannis gonna clean him up there. And now despite the blazing first offense, Atlanta Rain, only three minutes left, and the economy's still in very good position. Another dragon for Corey. Every minute, he's got a dragon yeah. right now. No, he's really sick right now. He's just, he's hitting everything. And so once you have that dragon in play, that's it, you're feeling pretty good. And we see it, you get the Maywall with the dragon, you're hoping to get a free kill. And it just slows things down for that offense, who once again have to move their way through. Ark in position this time, but he's gonna get the window pane down. And that's the dragon setting up. It doesn't boost the dragon damage. It boosts the initial projectile. Nobody close enough to get hit by that. But still, a kill picked up. That's Poke Poe dead. You're going to get Masa as well. Look at this man. He's already back up to 20%. He just used a dragon. Yeah, Masa with the brave play. Corey still hitting shots late. But I think maybe that, that should be something they try to do because Corey's been hanging out in this window the entire time. He's been sitting in pretty much the exact same spot, yeah. but he's hanging out over here with a D.Va and also his Batiste. So how do you ever really pressure him effectively? Now he's making sure there's no shenanigans yeah, coming around. Go. See? It's like, hey. Yeah, because actually that would be a great way to do it. And I think he's getting it like, he probably feels that Atlanta's getting wise to it as well. They may be considered sending FRD around just to dislodge him or distract him so the rest of the team can get in. All the sleep. That's a painful one. FRD was just messing around in pack room and he takes so much damage he has to use self-destruct just for a new mech. That's no good. That is very weak stuff indeed. And well, they are getting brought in. A minute and a half on the clock. FRD once again, no mech this time. He is gonna be back to square one, baby bay, dead. And this is looking like, once again, it's going to be the Washington Justice able to hold and hold clean. Atlanta Rain, they've been, I mean, eight kills, eight kills so far on yeah. the offense for the Atlanta Rain. They've been able to really use the economic advantage in their favor, has the defense of the Washington Justice. That time, Corey didn't quite have the Dragon up just yet, but Blizzard was there, and guess what? Dragon is now up again. Ark is doing enough on the Batiste to have the Amplification Matrix up nearly every single fight. And it feels like Erster has been holding on to this Blizzard. He may have used one earlier, but he's, it seems like they've never had a good chance to get in here. And Corey's still just going to be taking pot shots from the right side window. So he's getting all the help he needs. Baby Bay switches to try to get some picks and put some pressure on the damage dealers of Washington. All right, they made it past this time. Dragon just going to go through an empty hallway, but Masa goes up to the self-destruct. Thrown in by Sansam, and now the team is cut in half. Pokeball on the high ground. Sansam putting a little bit of pressure up there, but there's Baby Bay finally chiming in with the kill, but he's all alone. They're going to isolate him. He's taken out, so what was once Atlanta's best opportunity to push, they've now lost two very quickly, although the taxi service should come back in. No, Moss is back in here. It's up to Baby Bay to get back in here by himself. But you have to go. You have to go if you're Atlanta. Yeah, you got no time. You're down to 10 seconds. Let's get in here. And FRD getting d -max is not going to help things at all. There was the, uh, I mean, you had the bongos down trying to help things out with the damage, but now you need to get onto that point. There's the Blizzard waiting for you. Perfect play here from Stratus. Times it impeccably. He knows exactly where Atlanta Rain have to go. And the answer is they're just not going to be able to have any fun at all. Picked off one after the other and a perfect hold from the Washington Justice Hex. Not even a single tick of progress picked up for the Atlanta Rain. It's a tough map to push, but they were never able to get a substantial amount of people in there. You saw them trying to use ultimates to get in. A barrier got them in once, but it wasn't enough. You lose one or two here, no matter what, you're probably not gonna get any progress on the point. Maybe try a different rotation. We've seen teams trying to go left side, maybe even bum rush middle and set up a point. We shall see if Atlanta can bounce back right after this. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Power, forward, 
Washington, they managed to hold the Atlanta Rain off of the second point for five minutes, 46 seconds, Hex, and not allow them a single take of progress. It's a very solid defense, and a lot of it was being able to use the ultimates in the correct timing, in the correct position. Also having a dragon for every single push. Each Help. push each push takes about a minute, and he was charging it in a little over a minute. When he didn't have dragon, and his buddy uh, Stratus was there with a the blizzard to lock it in. But at some point, Atlanta, I mean, they were using ultimates to try to get in top right, but that becomes suspect because then you're still behind it, and yeah. now, now you're just now in position to fight. We've seen teams lately try different strategies of going far left, of going dead center, just to put some progress on the point and maybe piecemeal together, uh, eventually 100 progress, but 0% now for the Atlanta Reign on second point. Yeah, it's rough. It's really rough. And oh, wow, that's a strong start. This is going to be it. Atlanta Reign, they didn't look too phased at the end of that offense. They looked like they knew what they had to do here going into the second half, which is the hard hold of the first point. If you can just burn as much time as possible off of this first point, or even hard hold it, you're in good. You're not done yet here if you're Atlanta. They could win this, and even if they give up first, there's a draw potential here to happen as well. And Atlanta already up 1-0 in the series. Let's see if there's any changes coming for the Washington offense. It does seem like they still want to run the Reaper May. Yeah, we'll still get Reaper May in here. And it's still looking like a similar situation. Matrix is there trying to ferry them in and all oh, the headshot. I believe that was a combo play between Poke Poke. Well, there was a dink, and then Poke Poke gets yeah. the credit for it there. It doesn't necessarily show up in the kill feed, but able to take that one down. And now you don't have your mate to be able to get your own offensive wall in. Yep, exactly. So if there's a strategy here where if you think you're going to get May walled, you can put your own wall in to block it and at least give your team a path to entry. Maybe set it up vertically, maybe rotate right side, take that high ground away. There's a lot of ways to get in here with your own May. See it right there. We don't need the necessarily the May wall coming in from Stratus, but maybe they... They have to wait now because Corey's behind. Yeah, Corey was stuck there. And now you're going to get it. They're going to go really far all the way around. They're going to take the high ground opposite of the point. Well, we've seen some clever tech. Or low ground on the point. Okay. Also fine. Yeah, just get onto the point, see if they can establish the point. Yep, there we go. Shield is up. And now they get into it. Instantly melted. Good pressure getting put in here by Atlanta Rain. And Corey is just way late. And he instantly gets spotted and just take get he just gets hot shots taken out of by Dogman without any waste. Yep. Was never able to get in. The rest of Atlanta did not overreact to the pressure on the point. They still kept eyes on Corey. I bet you Corey wishes he was on Widow for that light. While everyone else is going in, you want to be back there trying to get something done. Not over yet. Still brawling on the point. Blizzard's ready. He's changed it up. He's on the Hanzo now. But Janus is dead, and this is going to be the end of the push. They're going to go ahead and reset. But now you're going to have Corey on a Hanzo. So, I mean, we've seen what's possible. When you get a Hanzo, you can get that one-shot kill potential. And that can turn things around. That can open up the defense for you. It can turn things around, but they've had a hard time getting everybody in here at the right time. Has the Washington Justice. And now we are just over a minute remaining. And as bad as Atlanta's second point offense looked, is as good as their first point defense looks right now. Atlanta in a very solid position to win this map. Yeah, they're looking great, Hex. There's a minute. 60 seconds. Or 60 seconds, however you want to put it. But I think they mean the same thing. There it is. We are, oh, the perfect halt, the perfect hook. Janus barely surviving, a good wall as well. That's Janus dead. We did commit the blizzard into this from Arster. He was really, I mean, if Washington committed into it, that would have been a real rough spot for him. I mean, if you commit the blizzard and it wins you the fight with a single kill, why not? You don't have to get six kills to win a fight. Sometimes one is enough. And you got Baby Bay with the dragon as well that's about to come online, so that back and forth each fight if you've got one or the other up. Washington's in a really good spot with ultimates though. They need to use these in the correct order, maybe even open with barrier so if you get walled off you can live through it. Barrier opens. And here's the push. Straight onto the point. Sound barrier used by Ark. 
They've isolated. They've isolated both damage dealers for Atlanta. Yeah, that's baby baby down. Erster's gonna follow as well pretty soon here. Erster does that. Uh, if he can take down Corey, could be good, but Corey survives it. You're gonna have him hanging on to this fight now, Atlanta Rain, and it is going to be rather than Washington Justice in overtime. Strat has got the blizzard on the points, and that's gonna be all she wrote there. They were able to get in and cut off both Baby Bay and Erster from the rest of their team. The big bodies went to the point to start brawling that one out. They bought enough time for Stratus to get up to a blizzard. Now a little shy of three minutes for Washington to put 33% on board. Now that's the change in this stage. No longer four minutes, three minutes added to your clock. And well, Dragon straight on it. Let's go. Time to party here. Washington Justice with the chance now to turn this around and to tie up this series one to one. So we will see. And they've got the high ground with the supercharger. Trying to look for these kills. Corey has spotted out his counterpart on the other side. But right now, Washington's in a great spot because they're in. This was further than Atlanta ever got. Yeah, they're on the point. Gonna need to get some kind of contest here. Moment time. No, Corey dead. And we've lost two. And that's gonna be the hard clean. Atlanta Rain. They set up shop. They're like, come and fight us. And Not Martin, happening. A mid-season addition to this team shows up big. It's four in the kill feed. And that will be a deflection. And also there's a nice stagger happening down here too. Yeah. Ice wall, halt him out. What's great about this stagger is Sansem doesn't even, he's not even low on health. All right, we're gonna get a perspective here of FRD's 3K. And yeah, FRD, he is the unsung hero. There's a whole lot of focus on Arster, Baby Bay. But I mean, FRD has been coming up with the goods, whether it's on D.Va eating blizzards, or with the whole hog, smart play there. Oh, Hex. Look what we got, baby it, it's, it's really good for this map, because you get up here, and you can just kind of throw in dynamites. You're going to get a bob up rather quickly. You don't see a whole lot of ash, but I'm loving it. Yeah, we rarely, rarely get to see ash in play. It might be the lowest play rate right now, especially in stage four. Yeah. You can even see Sim. Ah, looking for it. Out in the open, Shield's gonna get busted. Good team, Matrix cover though. Man, great teamwork there on the side of the Washington Justice to keep Janice up. That's a lot used to do it, but Baby Bay's still hanging out down here, just having a good time. Looking for those body shots. Washington Justice hanging on by a thread though. Corey gonna get frozen. This is the opportunity. Yep, Corey down, Sansam as well. And this time it will be once again the Atlanta Rain holding. 45 seconds left here for the Washington Justice. And 40, that's a team kill. 45 seconds left. And how are you ever going to deal with Baby Bay on the high ground? You're just hoping to maybe get a, a halt off. They tried that on there at 90%, just about. One dynamite will get him his ultimate. Bob, we'll see if Bob can do something here. A wall could pretty much stop Bob here. But we'll see. Is it Ash's time to shine? Atlanta going for the draw. Hoping for it. Hoping. Dynamite's there. Blind dynamite. Just trying to get it. Yeah, let's see it. The Bob is off cooldown. And there we go, Bob on the point. We know where you need to go here, boyos. We know where you need to go eventually. And now Bob's gonna get to go to work. Pogpo there, we're gonna trade it. Baby Bay is out, but he gets the close spawn. Not too worried about it. Baby Bay with Bob. Strikes back from the grave. Bob getting vengeance. It's a great use of the ultimate. It really is. It's hard to get value out of it. This one's not quite over yet, but a next couple of kills will lock them out of the point. Atlanta really trying to get this draw in. A few more kills, desperation time, and that one should just about wrap it up. Wrecking Ball will come in, but not long for this world is that hamster. Unbelievable. This is how it all plans out. Oh, D9 as well. FRD. I mean, it would have not changed much the outcome, but he still eats another ult just for oh, good great. measure. I can tell you what, why that Bob is so good is because he knows he's going to get pressured. He knows they're not going to let him sit up there. Yeah. And so he uses the Bob preemptively back to the point just to be a sentry gun. And then the rest of the team has to hide around the pillars. You saw that. But then his team just collapses on where they're hiding. They have to get out of hiding. Bob's an auto aim bot, shoots him in the head. And that's the best they could have asked for for the Atlanta rain. Okay. We will draw it out. Atlanta goes into the halftime up one to zero off some unconventional play. Yeah. Super cool to see. You get those pocket picks when it actually pans out. But we will be taking a break and we'll hear what the halftime crew have to say right after that. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. Whatever life brings your way, State Farm is here to help life go right.
somebody's five match winning streak is coming to an end in this one. And the Rain are trying to make sure it's not theirs. It's Atlanta up over the Washington Justice 1 0 coming into the half. What's up, everybody? Malik here. We got Zoe. We got Brand. It's halftime. Baby Bay popping off to start off this match for the Atlanta Rain. We were talking about the matchup between Baby Bay and Corey, or Corey and the Atlanta Rain DPS, that is. But Baby Bay, he rose to the occasion. Yeah, I, he I did. Should, Remember I should bloody well hope so. When you, you know? when you were all like, Justice got this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was wearing the. Oh, how we love. We anyway, playing. watch Baby Bay. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> so, yeah. It's rolling all over your Justice, friend, and it's, it's not looking enough. too good. And I honestly, like, for the Washington Justice, time and time again, in almost every team fight, it looks like their number one team fight win condition is Corey popping. Up. Yeah. So naturally, when the Atlanta Rain manages to put the pressure onto Corey or even taking him out of the equation, be that with Ursa's great walls or just by simply killing him, Bay Bay getting great picks onto him there early, uh, then the Washington Justice didn't really look like they had too much going for them. Yeah, the, the one thing that screamed at me from map one and map two was actually how uncomfortable Washington Justice are really playing compositions that don't revolve around a Widowmaker or a Hanzo. Mm. So when they're forced onto different heroes, the, 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 you know, the Reaper, for example, or even the, uh, the Doomfist, as we saw in tail end of that, when Corey's yeah. playing that, it gets a little bit iffy sometimes because yeah. they do, they are over-reliant, as Zoe said, on, on a lot of the, the pick-offs that Corey's able to pick up. Yeah, and it, you know, it's kind of, you get lost in the highlights sometimes because we've seen Corey popping off on Reaper here and there. But overall, I think that's a really good observation you guys just made. Now, when Corey did get on that Hanzo, as we saw in Hanamura, we're getting ready to see some highlights. He yeah. was popping off big time. He was dominating. And honestly, the, the one thing that this map really showcased to me, actually, is that the Washington Justice are really good at, uh, they have a great understanding of the meta right now. Yeah. Uh, and what I mean by that is particularly how they use their ultimate. A lot of teams tend to just throw them out, but the Washington Justice are very clever. You can see they're using this here, they use a Dragon Strike, two ultimates, and they just kind of rotate them. They rotate the, the damage dealing ultimates, they rotate the tanks here. You can see they're just using what they've got at their disposal to win team fight after team fight. Never too much, never too little, just the right amount. And this is what caused them to get the full hold against Atlanta Rain here. But Atlanta Rain also struggled to try and push into this. Baby you can see is on the Hanzo now to try and contest with Corey, but he didn't get the better end of this. And, and this comes to play into what they're really comfortable with as it stands. But then you can see the Atlanta Rain in the I end mean... also. Like, it, 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 both of these teams are so similar in how they play, in that they need their star players like Baby Bay, like Corey, to be playing on comfort picks. Yeah, but the, the, I think the biggest the difference is that if you're looking at it statistically, and um, uh, their team fight win percentage on all the different comps which are currently relevant in this very meta, be that double sniper, be that kind of bunkery comes with Baptiste, or yeah. uh, just uh, simply like the, the Roadhog or Rissa stuff. It is Atlanta Rain who is putting up the better numbers in a bigger variety of those comps. They seem to have a bigger overall grasp of the meta, and that allows them to shift at least and, and have different heroes putting them out there. Seeing Baby Bay on an Ash, for example, at the end for that good shield break, which really helped them. Right, and Atlanta's versatility, their preparation definitely uh, paying off for them today. As we all know, uh, if they win this match today, and San Francisco gives them a little bit of help. They've clinched their top 12 spot. This game is very important to them. Now, at worst case scenario, they do lose this match. Let's take a look at the rest of the schedule for what they have coming up, because there's still a long road to go for the Atlanta Rain. They got a lot of matches to play. Yeah, they did. One of the few teams with, with a bunch of maps, yeah, uh, less to, or a bunch of matches left to play, I should say. Uh, and they're expected to win against the Justice here today, currently leading the 1-0 as it stands. They got a huge advantage with that. Spitfire is a little bit more up in the air. Spitfire actually, another kind of a well-versed team in terms of playing similar compositions, but the Fuel and Uprising, I mean, those should be easy wins for them, I would yeah. say. Uh, and you can see here, it says Spitfire is an expected win. That game is actually much more 50-50 than I than I think. Uh, yeah. I mean, these these are <laughs> these expected wins are based on their current ELO, yes. and that's yes. just because Spitfire had a, a little bit of a slow start in this very uh, stage. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And uh, I have to say, uh, the Atlanta Rain, man, it, it, if they don't win, if they don't make it into the top 12 looking at their strength of schedule, I'd be definitely surprised. But going into the next half, the Atlanta Rain, they only have to clinch uh, one more map to win this matchup. Uh, what do you guys think about Hollywood? Is this a map that's favoring them? Uh, it honestly should as well, but it, it all comes down to how effectively they can shut down Corey. Because yeah. both of these maps, you see Hollywood, uh, I'm actually expecting the Justice to win that one. I'm expecting them to, to even it up. Junkertown yeah. is going to be super interesting as well. Because whether it's Enlayer or whether it's Baby Bay, who Atlanta, Bay, uh, Atlanta Rain field, that's going to be the player that's going to have to shut down Corey again when he moves over to the Widowmaker. Both of the maps, very strong at different sniper compositions. So it, it should be Justice now with an edge to take this one back away yeah. from Atlanta Rain. Uh, they need to shy away from the Reaper compositions. You're shaking your head. So he's yeah, not like it. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm spitting facts here. You know, I. I well, okay. Is, let's, I'm let's have them a to second halftime after the next one. After this? this? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. So he's sticking with the Atlanta Rain. Oh, looks like always. All in. All right, to the end. To the end. Well, guys, we got another half to go. The Atlanta Rain just one map away 
from helping their playoff hopes. We'll see if they can do it just after the break. Hello,我是杭州Spark主坦顾选 Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, from the break and from the halftime show, where they are sticking to their predictions. Hex, they're sticking to the guns. Yeah, used to waffle a lot more, I think. Yeah. But... What happened, Brent? What happened? Oh, people mock them relentlessly whenever they switch their pick, and you always look bad if you switch your pick, and then you still end up wrong. This one is really close, and it's kind of was living up to expectations. We went to three on control. Yeah. Hanamura was really tight there towards the end, and we ended up with a draw on Hanamura. Can't really get much closer than that. So now Atlanta having won the first control map, only one map away, even though the score is 1-0. That's how draws work and play out all four. And we're going to go to Hollywood next, which I feel is very good for the uh, Washington DPS. Corey can run Widow, and then uh, they kind of need to counter Widow. And who is it going to be? There's a substitution coming in. Enlair is going to be subbing in for Baby Bay. For Baby Bay, we've seen some teams go for this sort of stuff. Perhaps he's been practicing more on this map type. You know, teams with deep benches, they've got that versatility to draw on when they need it. So the main thing here is that we're not going to a map 5 next. No matter what happens now, it's going to be the four. Well, we could draw Holly. We could draw Holly. <laughs> I think you awkward. might have just cursed It us. could get awkward. I also think Knocking on all the I think it's really good for Atlanta, too, because if you look at their schedule, you have to just truly believe they're definitely in the playoffs, exactly. right? So you want to make sure all your guys are firing in all cylinders, everybody's warm, and that you have all these pieces to use. Yep. So I think it, there is merit to just giving guys play time. And I don't think you lose a whole lot going from Baby Bay to Enlair. And I think Enlair might, you know, he's, he's got a very good widow in his own right. So I think this makes a ton of sense here. And perhaps it's just a, a strategy they want to run here. Enler can run the May probably a little better than Baby Bay can too, so that opens up Erster to play these DPS heroes because then he doesn't have to run the May. Yeah, he gets to play the Hanzo or, I mean, Genji. More Genji, please. I just kind of want to see a hard carry on Genji, but... but... I mean, you could on the offense here. Genji used to be really, really good on Hollywood trying to dive into the cafe when teams were set up there. Yep. Right now, it does appear that we've got a very close to a mirror match going on. Dogman is going to play Zen, and Guido is going to play Ana. The main difference is here. Mm -hmm. Big nade or not? Oh, sick nade, yeah, for Yudo. That's a good start. Just maximum. Ult charge getting 
Thrawn up here for the Washington Justice on defense. Atlanta Rain taking a tremendous amount of damage. And look at Masa. He's already got the window pane. Barely the first push. We're barely 30 seconds into this first match. And he's just done so much healing for the Atlanta Rain that he's going to be able to boost their damage in a real way. And they're not going to have any shields to hide behind because they're going to get melted instantly. So Masa gets traded, but that's John who's down the main tank and the main shield gone for the Washington Justice. Masa going down is really bad though because they don't have the healing necessary now. It's only Dogman up, but they're gonna continue to try to push on this and just try to get the sustain of their own onto the point. Dogman's very likely gonna be pocketing their Orisa while this happens because the other heroes have their own kind of healing. Ito's all alone up top, but they're unable to isolate him, and now reinforcements coming in strong for the Atlanta Reign. Yeah, Ark is back into the fight now, so we've got the healing. That's stabilized. And so they're going to be trickling in on the side of the Justice one after the other, but that's two ticks of permanent progress picked up here for the Atlanta Reign. And the Washington Justice with their backs to the wall, they might fall. You've got the trade, both Arissa's down, but then the trance comes up perfectly executed here by Dogman. We were looking for the Bionade thrown in. Unfortunately, no joy there, but Corey. Or he gets a couple, the hook comes in, but they're able to clean up FRD, and this should be a deflected Atlanta offense as they try to come in. Reinforcements come back, the Nano comes in just to make sure. A late hook, a late kill on Masa, yes. and Washington's defense stabilizes. You gotta give it to Corey, man. Erster was trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Corey hits the fadeaway shot on him and then just doesn't die and eventually nets four final blows. For Corey's the team. clutch. He's so clutch. When they really need a couple kills, he gets it for him every single time. That's been kind of the MO for this Washington team. That's why it's so hard to count them out, even in bad number situations. Now both teams are gonna have a dragon up. The advantage for Atlanta though is they, they're gonna have a blizzard of their own. In fact, they're gonna have most of their own. Dragon through. Corey gonna find Dogman. Dogman wasn't able to make it into the field. That's sense him. Takes down FRD as well. Two quick kills here for the defense and the Washington Justice sitting pretty. They will be able to contest no problem at all. The Blizzard got nothing. It's zoned them off of the point now. And now Washington is kind of bisected here. Another big hook up top. Yep. Sansem continues to improve as this stage goes on. So key to have a strong Roadhog on your team right now. And that is, those are just the parting shots. Pokepo wasn't necessarily trying to die, but he gets the same purpose, you know. The result is the same. He's back in spawn. I mean, it's really bad for Atlanta because they used the ultimates that they really wanted. They used Blizzard. They ended up using the Dragon. The Blizzard got absolutely no value out of it. It pushed them off the point for a little bit, but that's not going to result in permanent progress that they needed. They need the last third. They've got a minute to get in. Yeah, they have to get in here. So let's see. Halt in. There's the Hulk. Perfect play. So sick. That's textbook stuff there from the Justice. That's pretty much what we've been seeing all stage long. Yeah, Sansam with five final blows, about 67% hook accuracy. He's hit the hooks. Everyone else is cleaning them up as well. well I mean, it's 13 final blows to four. Atlanta Ray, they need to figure out how to get some kills here, Hex. Otherwise, they're just not going to make it happen. Well, they're a mile away from both of their damage ultimates as well. They need Poco to get a set point here and maybe get a whole hog to open up some space for their team. There it is. Blizzard at the door. Oh, uh, Freddy gets frozen as well. That's going to slow things down. They're not able to push onto the point. They will have time, though. It's not the end of days. Nine seconds left on the clock. Sensem got boosted, and now it's the whole hog trying to cut him up, trying to push him all over the place here. Big pick onto Endlayer, and they are just falling one after the other on the side of the Atlanta Reign, and they will not be picking up a single point on Hollywood. They got some progress, though, so we'll see if they're able to match that. But I also want to give Guido credit, who's lately been playing for this squad. There was a late hook on the Sansam, and that was going to be the isolation kill that Atlanta was looking for. The Nano comes in clutch, keeps him alive. That Nano keeps him alive long enough to get Whole Hog up, pushes them all away. We'll see the second half of Hollywood in just a second. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Into the eye. 
generous. Goldshire Pictures, where noobs went to die once upon a time in a beautiful game called World of Warcraft. I never played World of Warcraft. In our group <laughs> chat, you guys were all talking World of Warcraft, and I'm like, oh, is this what it's like when me and Matt talk sports? Because I don't understand anything you guys are talking about. I have no idea what these mean. You might as well be speaking Klingon. Oh. The worst part is, is that I enjoy sports, too, except that I enjoy none of the sports that you guys enjoy, so I yeah. can't even relate with you guys there. Cause <laughs> I'm like, did anybody watch MotoGP this weekend? Yeah. Crickets. All right, great. All right, cool. It but. gets a little rough when we get into fantasy football season. Uh, oh, it gets man. a little rough for the group chat. All right, Washington trying to tie this one up. They need to get to 88% to do so and send us to a decisive Junker Town, which, to be dead honest, as a fan of the game, I'm hoping for it. Yes, this is the play for the Washington Justice. Take us to a map four that means everything. Oh, that's a peak you can't get away with, Guido. Ties to his opposite number. What you doing there, Guido, buddy? Dogman down, but now you lose Stratus, and things actually two men down here for the Washington Justice, and still a good core here. So long as Masa's alive, there's plenty of healing here for the Atlanta Reign. He's Co the main source. Corey's going for the play, but he's been spotted out. He was going for the hard flank. They did catch him out. They're just going to wait for the rest of the team. Corey and Giannis waiting for reinforcements to come. Can't get picked right here, though. Oh, buddy. Guido, that's twice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I've just praised you in the last round for good nano usage, good nades and everything. And now the Zen has looked feeble. Yeah, but now he's playing Zen. Now he can hit headshots. He can go for volleys. He's, he's picturing, you know, channel your inner Jonak. I am the octopus. Well, these fights have the gone... Is me. They've gone so poorly for Washington that they're, they have no ultimates really to use. Maybe you get Ark in here and set a point behind Giannis and try to get everybody to pump some damage through this window so you can finally catch up on ultimates. <laughs> We're gonna find out if they can do it, Hex. But, I mean, they've still got time. Two and a half minutes. Not the end of days. Shield was up, so Guido not gonna get any joy there. He does get the halt combo, though. So, a little bit trying to build up to that trance. That's what's so important here for Don't Guido. Rotation. Stratus is up top. They've taken high ground. Window down. Window down from Ark. Dragon thrown instantly in, though. FRD gonna find that first kill. Corey out of it already. And with the uh, Lantern down, nobody's gonna die on the side of Atlanta Rain. So long as they're chilling out in it. And so a reset coming in here for Washington Justice. Okay, they were able to at least get the Dragon Strike out of Erster. Corey will have a Dragon Strike upon his return. They're gonna have to walk into Blizzard though. Endler's gonna have to get better Blizzards than he did on his offense. That's gonna be the key. Oh, the Halt Hook again. FRD, perfectly timed barrier. Thrown in by Poke Poke, keeps his off tank up. And now we're in the standoff hex. It's the standoff. And what do we got? You got Corey the Dragon. Gonna try and block the stairs off as well. I like it. Baywall in as on top of it all. Good teamwork there between Stratus and Corey trying to work together to set a trap for the Atlanta Rain. But the Rain will not be fooled. And Erster getting revenge drops Corey. I think you have to wait now. I mean, you might be enticed to try to get this Blizzard in here. But if you get a Blizzard in there, where's your finishing damage if Corey's not into this fight? So they're going to hold back here. Ark is already staying way far back. 110 on the clock. That might be enough for two pushes. But essentially, Washington in the next fight should probably be going all in. Mm. Waiting for that fresh barrier. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. And there's the blizzard over the top. It's a couple. There. Nothing there to eat it, though. So. FRD, we're going to get the trade. And Lair, he gets his blizzard down. He dies in the process. But that is still a whole bunch frozen in place there on the side of the Washington Justice. A frozen Sansem and Ark as well, but Atlanta Rain, they need to stick together. That's what's so important now at this point. The Transcendence was there. People are able to dodge. Oh, huge flank attempt from Dogman. He's forced to Transcendence early. Ah, uh, they're falling. This is it. It's looking like the Washington Justice are going to tie it up, Hex. It's looking like they're going to get the job done here on the first point of Hollywood. One take picked up. 
20 seconds on the clock, and they are getting ejected bodily from the point. Not possible for them to set up a defense. Atlanta Rain, nobody gonna be here in time to touch. Nope. Tied up situation, one to one. Washington Justice run it back on Hollywood. Dogman went for a huge high ground flank up top. He got caught out, took an icicle, forced him to transcendence early onto the point. It wasn't enough because he was running away to transcend people. The hook comes in, grabs somebody out of the transcendence, and then the domino started falling. Washington will take Hollywood. That means we are tied up. 1-1 one, one going into our fourth map, which will be Junkertown. Expect Widows. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Zip Chair Gaming, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. The new comms check is amazing. I knew this was going to be a fun series. Okay. Ready to go, ready to go. You do know I can't eat lasagna while this is in my cheeks. If I have it on my fork and then we cut to somebody else talking, then I don't actually have to eat it. Just see what happens. Cotton balls, mix it up with lasagna. <laughs> see if you can swallow it without that. Durr, durr. Oh, dude. We found out that Matt, his watch, he never actually bothered setting the time on it. He just likes the way it looks. How is that surprising? <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> Matt's such a baller. Whistling failure. <laughs> my brain is broken. Welcome to my hell. <laughs> Bren was never marching band. Nope. That doesn't exist in the UK. Really? Yeah, because we're not sad. Alrighty, can I get a black coffee? Um, Seth, can you get it together, please? Thanks. That bacon jack is so hot right now. Ooh, okay, spicy. I've heard that. I've heard that on the internet. <sighs> I'm gonna catch that on comms check. <laughs> Everything the light touches. Is what about all the shadows good. over there, Dad? You must never go there. Okay. Yeah. Good. I can post it right now. Yo, Yo, dude, it's Sunday and I'm mildly delirious. I have a plate. It ain't normal. It ain't right. That explains everything. Thank you. Ah, uh, there we go. More of the cop check. You guys realize that's uh, exactly what you guys can watch. Of what we say during the break. Yeah, we uh, it's good times up here. Sign that contract with HBO. Put on the real comps check next year. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Well, Hex, we got ourselves a real series on our hands. That's what I'm excited about. Yeah. Tied yeah. up one to one. We're going to a map four that means something. That's always a joy. Yeah, and uh, definitely not a map five. Our wins Junkertown wins the series, and Junkertown, it's a fun map to watch if you like long sight lines and you like Widowmaker play. And we saw Godsby put on a performance yesterday. We've seen Widows kind of crush it. Speaking of Widows, very likely why Baby Bay is coming in. Again, and Lair probably their better uh, May, and so on May oriented maps, they're going to use those. And Baby Bay, very likely their better, better Widow. Better, better Widow? Yes, I tried. Come on, you just count? you just saw how barely functioning I am on that last comps chip. We, we need we need the swoosh for Junkertown. Junkertown. So final map of the series. Very simple. Push the payload as far as you can. Three points possible, mm -hmm. and we will find out in a moment. Yeah, Atlanta Rain gonna be on the offense. So no pressure here, Atlanta, but you gotta get some work done here. I am expecting very much a Cory versus Baby battle, at least on this first point. You see it carry over a little bit on the second point. And honestly, even for how small last point is for Junkertown, you still see a lot of Widow play on that last point. It's just sight lines all over. Art getting his groove on. Better the dance. For all the marbles here, Atlanta trying to lock up playoffs positioning here. Washington trying to keep their perfect stage alive. This one should be a fun battle. Yeah, this is it. And Washington really just going to be playing, uh, playing, uh, what is it? Spoiler. That's what you always say. Spoiler. Because they don't have a run going for them in terms of the stage playoffs. They just get to ruin other people's streams. Yeah. Which can be fun. Yeah, I mean, so, it's so, an entertaining time. It's something to play for. Erster is on the Genji, very likely to try to duel double pressure onto Corey's Widowmaker. Yeah, he's looking for it already. Erster is up harassing Corey. <laughs> Corey knows about it too. <laughs> Please save me. Already rotating out of that position and Sansam getting topped up there. Good positioning here from Ark and Guido. The duo, just so much healing output between the two of them. So much utility you have to get through as well with the Bionade, with the field. Yeah, Erster gets anti-healed. He is very, very low. Genji's got a lot of escapability though, so he gets out of there. This one's been bloodless until right now. Boom. There it is. Erster takes down Corey. And we will get the res going on Baby Bay. No res possible for the Washington Justice, so they gotta get them the hard way. Erster dead, that'll help. That's gonna, gonna get them a strong start. With the window down as well right now, Sansom trying to take advantage of it, trying to crank out that additional damage, and Baby Bay dying. Maybe enough here for the Washington Justice to turn it around. There's a Blizzard going in. Body block as well, gonna stop Popo from surviving it. He's dead. FRD gets D-Mag for the Washington Justice. Yeah. They started this fight down a man, and it doesn't even matter. They're gonna win it. It might have been a blizzard that they didn't necessarily 100% need, but better safe than sorry in that case, because you want to hold here. It is a very good point for the Widowmaker, and I believe that Washington probably has extreme faith in Corey. We, did, we checked in on their comms last week, and Corey told him, if you win this map, I will carry you to victory. I will mm -hmm. carry the last couple of maps, and he made good on his words. So how do you not have faith in that guy? Yeah, you gotta trust. You gotta trust. Oh! So close there. Arister's right, got the Dragon Blade though, so he's gonna be waiting for it. But now without that reflex, he's gonna be a little bit more careful. Dogman Dog just saved Baby Bay. Baby Bay had been frozen, but unable to secure the kill. This is getting awkward though, because that's the trance used now for Atlanta Rain. And we passed the two minute mark for the Atlanta Rain as well. So before it was all fine and dandy, right? Okay, you know, we're, we're, we didn't win that push, it's all right. Giannis out no man's land. They have to commit the immortality field. He stays alive. He's gonna survive it. Erster coming in now. Without the field, there's nothing to keep him alive. They are gonna go ahead and meet death up close and personal. Erster. Once again, Erster is just a monster. And Genji can be so good against the Batiste because of that. It just costs you one slash to get the Immortality field. It resets on everything else. He gets in there. Art goes down, and that's first point captured for the Atlanta Reign. No, I need his. So, Baby Bay. Baby Bay coming back into it as well. He's had, you know, an impact as in one kill so far. Well, and Corey hasn't done much either. Yeah. Corey has a single elimination, single final blow, and that was on Baby Bay. This is just Erster right now having a bit of a show. Getting topped up as well, good support. And they are gonna make some progress here on the payload. Washington Justice though, they are here early enough. So it's a chance enough for Corey to get in position to perhaps pop somebody who's out of position on the side of the offense. Kind of a scattered defensive effort, at least on the first point, but now on a set point up top, able to hold this high ground. But Atlanta doesn't care. Atlanta just taking all this free push and no one's stopping Poke Poke. No, he's just chilling out. I mean, look at this. It's, where's the contest? Finally, the side. Now's the time. Corey's on the pine flank. He's behind him, but Baby Bay catches it. Yeah. 
And you still got him in. I mean, they're kind of spread out over there, but now you've got Erster going to work. He's putting the pressure on Corey. Gets frozen for his trouble and gets killed. Baby Bay dies as well. That's Corey winning the duel there. The rest has already been used on Erster, so they are down a man. But they're still getting pushed out of that payload. That's the thing. Every meter matters. Kills are cool and all, but the payload getting to the yellow rectangle there, that's what matters most right now to the Atlanta range. FRD going down should slow down this Atlanta push. Another blade. Yep, another blade. Double kill there. Looking support. for another target. Hey, there you are. Surprise, surprise. Arster with another three kills with the blade. We'll die in the process, but he did his job. Five Dragon Blade kills so far, and it's just Stratus on the point. He will go down. Giannis will fall unceremoniously here, not even able to stall it out. Second point picked up from Atlanta, again on the back of a blade. Yep, sick. That's Rooster. Just, I mean, he's got seven kills. Six of those have come with the blade. So uh, it's, it's, it's solid work, and it's really getting the maximum value out of the Genji. The Genji, you've mentioned it before, really just a blade machine now. Kind for of the most hang part, hang out until you get your blade, and then hope you get something good he's out of it. He's doing a good job of pressuring Corey, and maybe he's yeah. not getting the kills on the Corey, but it's forcing Ark and Guido to back up and keep Corey alive because he keeps retreating to his Batiste. That means the ground fight is much easier for Atlanta, and that's why they've got all the free push on second point. It's a fair way to put it. It's a fair way. Erster, though, still the hard carry. And let's go. Atlanta Rain now on that home stretch, approaching that third point, trying to get around the bend. Decent defense getting put up here by the Washington Justice, though. And a kill on Poco -po as well. So that should pretty much grind things down to a halt here for Atlanta. Now the Nano onto Roadhog doesn't end up getting a whole lot. He notices that there's not much to be able to whole hog here. Nano whole hog can be very good. He gets the pack. Yeah, I got the pack. He was getting body blocked there by Dogman. Clever. Oh, Dogman! There we go. Get out. Sick play there. Whole hog comes out to secure the kill. Another hook! Dude, this is where Roadhog is just so fun to watch. 73% hook accuracy right now for Sansa. Yeah, he's hitting everything. Doesn't even need the halts to help him out. Guy's Le getting it done. Last game we casted a Justice, I thought he had one of his better D.Va games of all time. Now he's having a really good Hog game. And this was a guy who got a lot of blame early in the season when we were running a 3-3 meta for the Washington Justice. And Sansa has come into his own in this 2-2-2 roll lock meta. Yeah. You're starting to see them come back into their roles, and well, yeah, I mean, you point out a hex, and you're absolutely right. It's blade time. It's blade time. He has sharpened it. <laughs> this is a high quality blade. Might want to hold off now, though. The late kill on a baby bay means that they're going to back up here. 90 seconds remain to get some more progress on the last point. But this is really good to be able to stall out a team's push at this point. Especially if you're going to be running a May. Just wall up one of the doors, your Roadhog's getting kills, and then Corey's still the ever-looming threat about two miles away. How do you ever even get back there? Oh. They're so far back. Big and Corey dies again. again. Yeah. Corey again. Now he's coming in clutch. Three kills to his name. And Valk had been popped too, but Masa dies during the Valkyrie. It's getting kind of awkward here, Hex. Yeah, it's getting ultra awkward here. Erster almost gets picked off there late. Does get picked off there late. Sansap, the madman. Now they need to die. Stop trying to hide in the corner. Just die as fast as possible. If you're Atlanta Rain, you need to get out of here. Sansap not even going to play any games. Doesn't try to go for the stall on FRD. Just sends him back to spawn. Dude, 80% hook accuracy, 14 final blows for Sansap. To put that in perspective, Corey has four, Stratus has three. He's doubling the combined final blows of his damage dealers. I believe that is uh, also possible. The hard carry, the road hog. I mean, the hooks are pretty good. Set. At some point, the blade has to come out. You hear the ominous music. Janice dies, or no, Coco dies as well as Masa. This is just going to be a can of Erster. Make up all the difference. No, because he has to go for that split second call to take down the lantern. And he pays for it with his life. It's not going to be any value there for the blade. And this is where the heroics end. Corey manages to pop Baby Bay again. Baby Bay went all the way back into Wraith for him to challenge Corey. Corey just hit him in the dome. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's just the Hail Mary, the desperation play. Well, they're getting some kills now. The Doomfist comes in from Erster. He gets Arquito also down. There's no healing. So the desperation switches for Atlanta actually paying off here. This is getting out of hand. Now they're going to get progress. Now they're going to make it around the bend. Stratus drops the wall just to be able to get through. Will survive it? Nope, never mind. Arster's there with the Doomfist. 
And between Urster and Baby Bay right now, they can have a lot of fun with this. Baby Bay now going to be a bit more mobile. Going to be able to get in on those flanks. And somehow, when it looked like it was all going to fall apart here for Atlanta Rain, they are just meters away from picking up a third point. All on this final fight for the Washington Justice. Corey's changed up. He's got the Reaper as well now in play. Hell, we even have a Brigida. It's a big anti heal, but no kills coming through. It has been all Atlanta while the Fiesta continues. Yep, sound barrier used. Now you're going to get the Meteor Strike over the top. Why not drop it on the point? <laughs> it still finds the kill on Sansam. It decks him bodily. And the turn it around. The plays coming in here from the Atlanta Rain to clutch it out at the end. You get a little bit of the sense that Washington thought that one was already over. And then all of a sudden, the Doomfist comes in. He kills both of your supports. You get back here on a Tracer, and you get all of the kills in the cleanup. And once the Clown Fiesta started, Atlanta rolled it all the way through. Mm -hmm. Baby Bay making plays at the end, even though he died on the Reaper repeatedly. He switched to Tracer, and then he actually started to get some work done. So good on him. And Urster, well, Urster is just Urster, he just dominates. I mean, Sansem did everything he could to carry through that one, but once the supports initially died and then wholesale changes came in from Washington to try to respond to the changes that Atlanta made, and Atlanta just kept the ball rolling. That's what Doomfist is really good at. You get a couple of kills, you get those shields up, keep diving it, keep going for it. And then you're worried about the Doomfist up front, so you switch to the Brigida, and then there's a Tracer still messing around, so you gotta switch your shield, and then the Tracer is out of there because she recalls. Yep. It's kind of this crazy, chaotic composition. Last second trying to get anything done, and Atlanta accidentally finishes Chunker Town. Yeah, it does feel like it. It's just like, oh, they stumbled onto the third point. Like, ah, oh, this is where we wanted to go all along. We Four forgot. final blows with yeah. 82 seconds on Doomfist. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're getting, like, that's what we're getting to see with this meta as well now. I mean, you're sure you're getting to see the hog, but the one-shot kill, right? So it's either the hook coming in, that's same time hitting every hook, that's definitely going to help out with the kills, but you're getting the Widows, you're getting the Hanzos. It's Atlanta. fun to see, and you get the fist. Atlanta with the forward hold. A lot of teams have been running this lately because they want to make sure you're not able to set up a pirate ship. Also, it's fine because you can usually come back and fight where you normally would anyway. Yeah, exactly. So if you were to lose this, you can still turn it around. Nice attempt, but... Quick reactions there by Pokepo, saw it coming. Will not get slammed against the cart, will not take additional damage. Ah, there's the pick though. Baby Bait just can't catch a break. A couple of opening kills here. This should end up favoring Washington to be able to break out. The wall will come up by them time. I wonder if they're gonna retreat on this. No, they're still playing cart here. But this is what you see on almost every escort map. Think of like Dorado, think of Route 66. You might as well fight as far forward as possible. The thing you're giving up, perhaps, is ultimate charge. Yes. That's it. If you end up feeding to the other team, but if you can equalize, that's okay, because holding up front means that when you come back, you're going to be able to hold where a lot of teams initially would hold anyway, on top of Big Earls or Courtyard in, yeah. in Dorado. So it makes a ton of sense for these escort maps. It's been a theme. What's going to be really fun here, Hex, is how what do Atlanta do when they come out here and they see that they're running into Double Sniper and they've got a Reaper May? Uh, you try to go through the house and you try to bum rush him goat style. Yeah, get onto the point, rush it. But they're just going to get shot at from all sides. There's the nano. Oh, this is going to be good here for Sansem. He can take a lot of punishment. Gross. Damage mitigation on him. And now he's going to have the whole hog. Just the tail end of the boost. But that's enough to just melt these shields. Atlanta Rain trying to do the best they can. We'll trade back and forth, but it is Poco and Masa going down. Uh, that's the snipers who are able to get a couple of kills. That's a third kill now from Corey. And Corey and Stratus, there's a fourth! My goodness. Yeah, this is where you get to just have fun. If you're Corey, because they have no answer to it. Yeah, okay, you want to go through the houses, but at some point you're gonna have to get out onto that payload. At some point you have to contest. And that's where you come into Corey's wheelhouse. That's where you come into Stratus's wheelhouse. They can drop you. A lot of Washington fans in the house. Corey in the house as well. They chant his name and why not? It's shot after shot after coming up kind of kind of small oh. on their defense. Maybe they can't catch a break. At what point do you stop doing it, Baby Bay? He's done it to you twice. Twice Baby Bay has tried to get back on Corey and twice Corey's done that to him. It's just the easiest shot. You just, uh, yeah, hold on, let me just go ahead and set up. It's like playing t-ball or something, you know? <laughs> You have all the time in the world to play on your swing. As someone who struck out in T-Ball. Oh, no, really? No. Oh, <laughs> there are limits, X, to my goal ability. I mean, I, I am naive. I will believe some stuff, but still. A defense comes in pretty strong here for Atlanta. Another very forward hold. They're able to get Corey out of this. Corey's on the Doom Fist for the moment. Stratus is behind them, but he's going to get bullied out. 
Get out of here, Gita. I'm trying to play all clever, hide in the corner. Nope, not meant to be. Yeah, another strange composition here for the Washington offense. Arc on the... For Gita. For Gita. It's something they used to run on a night market, but that's when they had like a sim to really get in there. Mm -hmm. This composition is about getting in there because Arc can't really do as much on the Brigida as she used to. You do have the healing packs, but I don't know. I don't know about this one. That's interesting. I mean, you have that CC. That's maybe what they're trying to hope to get in here. Well, Atlanta's got every single ultimate here. This is a fight on paper that they should win. Handle it. Yeah, it's the full six pack. And now you're going to get the overcharger. Supercharger to kick things off. Dogman with the coalesce is too old to use. Just keep an eye on the check marks at the top of your screen and see just how much they're willing to commit to this. Wow, both of the uh, support ults being committed to this fight from Atlanta Rain. I think uh, Masa wishes he had that one back. Yeah, that's. It's not terrible for Washington on their offense. They did end up using the nano boost onto Corey. He got a single kill onto Erster. The Lucio taxi service now going all the way back to try to get Erster into this mix. The spawns are far away. There's a small window for Washington to at least be able to take a positional advantage here. Erster and Lucio Massa on the way back. Indeed there is, but we couldn't have the blizzard here thrown in by Erster. Has to be careful of Sansam, does not want to get eaten up by the team matrix. And Sansam using all of his D-Matrix just to try and keep that Blossom down. That opens it up. Earths are going to get in here with the Blizzard, and that is going to be the Atlanta Rain stabilizing. Excellent work here from the Rain, and now you're going to get to see the Stagger. Sansam blocked off at the door. Nice delay there. It, it's reminiscent of some previous metas as well, where you know that there's only one thing to stop two ultimates. Then you just wait for that one thing to be used to stop an ultimate. Like a transcendence would come through, you know, and you're like, okay, so now we use the other one. In that case, you're like, okay, D Matrix is gonna block one of these two. Yeah. Let's start with the Death Blossom. That way there's no Matrix and we'll get full value out of Blizzard. It's a sacrificial ultimate, essentially, from Baby Bane. Get it. So far, it's working out. They are looking. Oh! Bomb in the corner. Giannis nowhere to go. And Sensem getting D Mech as well. That's perfect here for the Atlanta defense. Full on cleanup, minute and a half left on the clock here, Hex. Washington Justice, could this be it? Could the streak be over? They simply can't find any space, and Atlanta's done a really good job of holding far forward to make them earn every single inch, which is what we didn't see from the Washington defense on this exact same point. Washington, not a ton to work with. They can go in here and hope for a prolonged fight, although those have been hard to come by for Washington, and maybe get a blizzard going. That's it, that's the only thing they really have a lead on right now. Kind of curious, it's Stratus. A little bit of pressure on him. But the coal essence thrown in by Guido. Lighthouse shine in the way, and it is going to be onto the payload. But Atlanta, they're not overcommitting. They're not getting ahead of themselves. Bongos are down from Pokepo, boost damage for his team. And now you're just gonna have Stratus, there it is. Blizzard in the corner, nowhere to go for Dogman, nowhere to go for Pokepo. They're pinned, but they lose two on the same time, at the same time, on the side of Washington. This is just all over the place now, because Atlanta, they've dropped one, but Erster, yeah, it's Erster. looking like it's gonna be the call to Die on the reset. Cart. Die on the cart is the call right now. They're just looking to reset, but based on where the payload is right now, they're definitely gonna be another defense. Erster's gonna have Blizzard here as well. So Washington's able to get in, and I think it was a smart rotation by Washington to finally take a different angle, yeah. go all the way bottom right, use Coalesces to open it up, make them come fight you, and they responded rather well. But with 10 seconds left, we're gonna probably hit overtime before this payload gets there. Atlanta needs to win a single more fight. They've got Blizzard, they'll have Coalesce and self-destruct as well. Is it clutch time for Sensem? Do we get the D-Matrix eating up a Blizzard? We haven't seen too many of them here in the last two maps from these Divas, so I'm curious to see. Who's gonna make the play? Erster chasing away the D.Va, but Sansam's ready for it. These are the mind games within mind games. Who's going to slip up first? Blizzard oh. goes down and Erster can't even get his Blizzard off. Coalescence oh, now coming in. The wall is gonna try to knock off some reinforcements. Not over yet though. Masa gets a kill on a Corey. That's so much damage gone. Yeah, we're in the uh, we're, but we're in the home stretch here now because they are starting to balance this their way. Washington Justice. This is where it starts to fall apart for the Atlanta Raid. Five alive for the Justice, and that is going to be more than enough. Guido just beating to beating them to death barehanded in the end, and we'll get a second point for Washington Justice and a time added to their bank. Ninety seconds added. And we're not done yet, Hex. It's time to play the value game right now. Really just keep an eye on Stratus and Erster, Baby Bay and Corey. But I think really Stratus and Erster are the ones to look at. Blizzard is the ultimate right now in these metas here. It's like how Graviton was the ultimate in our previous three tank, three support meta. 
Erster versus Stratus. Who gets more value out of their Blizzard? And can either of these Divas step up big? That was a nice wall there from Stratus. And there we go. Blizzard is in. Forces him out onto the point and looking to capitalize on it. Guido going to pay for it. And Stratus, he'll trade it. Baby Bay is down, but he really has been the sacrificial lamb here for Atlanta Rage because they are not giving up on the side of Atlanta. Five alive, sound barrier used. Erster still has the Blizzard. You might use it now because they know that they've got the D.Va out of mech, but they might feel they don't have to, and they don't. They get a couple of kills. That's it. Confidence here from Atlanta. And final push territory for Washington Justice. This is it. They're going to have to win out from here on out because it's 30 seconds on the clock for them. It's a terrible spot for the offense again. You hate when the payload stops here. The walls are going to be there. Everything is set there, and it's so hard for the offense to get in. They, they're going to have to use ults just to get in, but they don't have either of their support ultimates up right now. Oh, but they managed to sneak their way through. Erster nearly getting picked immediately. Bong goes down, and Erster picked again! Baby Bay trying to make it happen, goes for it. Gets that Blossom in there, and he'll get the job done the old-fashioned way. Corey dead. Nothing from the self-destruct coming in from Sensen, but he gets a fresh mech, and there is the sound barrier used by Ark. But Dogman's here, beaming him down. Maximum damage getting cranked in here, but the Atlanta Rain getting caught in the blizzard. They don't have a coat. They're dead. A last second blizzard comes in from Stratus when they needed it. Again, the call is die on the cart to lay this, but we are in overtime. Atlanta Rain with one more fight win will win the series and put themselves in great position. They need a little bit help today to lock in their spot, but Atlanta Rain so close to winning this one. Blizzard on the board for Erster. Can he find the angle? Can Sansam be a hero and eat it up? You're getting the call, you're getting the chance. Now it's the push. What do we get here from the Justice? Do they fight back? Did we see him? It's the overtime push, and Erster, is he ever going to get a Blizzard off? It's looking like now's the time. Throws it in, covers the point, makes it very difficult here for the Washington Justice, and it's gonna cost him, and that is it! Atlanta Rain. Take it in the end, two to one. They end the Washington Justice win streak and they make their lives easier getting into the playoffs. Dogman, quiet and humble as always, talking to his fans out there. That one was brutal because I was watching Sansem's reaction there and I was watching the overhead. He was about a meter out of range before eating that blizzard. He had been on high ground, yeah, he's trying to get it. it. That's all he was playing for. It didn't happen. The Washington Justice will lose their first time this stage, but what a turnaround for this franchise. Meanwhile, Atlanta does win it. Obviously, still some friends up here too. Atlanta does win this one, and they have a chance depending on what happens today, to lock in their spot in the playoffs. wonder, you know, if this was football or something, would they just start, start trading jerseys there? Is that something we're going to start seeing on the main stage yeah. soon? We're going to have to get some undershirts going on if we want to do that. We do have yeah. a terms, terms of service policy to, to adhere to. <laughs> Is that why you're asking for hand warmers? All right, <laughs> let's hand over Mika. Winner's interview, and I believe she's got that. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Dogman, who I just realized I'm taller than for once today, so I'm feeling very proud. But you should be proud of yourself for taking the win today, and you took down one of the best teams this meta. What was it? What was the key to victory today? Um, I mean, just good practice, constantly grinding. You know, we know stage four is our stage, and we want to keep playing. Um, but we know, like, this meta can make any team good. Like, Washington Justice probably was, like, one of the worst teams in the all of Overwatch League forever. Like, la for the last three stages, and then they just became one of the best teams this stage, right? So, like, anything can happen, you know, we're getting better, and hopefully we can keep getting better. Absolutely, and as you said, anything can happen, and you can go undefeated this stage, but you have a long way to go. So what is it gonna take to keep you guys in it and really keep your heads on straight? Uh, just, I mean, it's just still constantly grinding, you know? It's like, keep, keep playing, keep having fun, uh, I think that's like the big thing. We keep having fun with the game, you know, even in, even in the matches, like we start screaming and, and Moss is like, shut up! And we're just like, no, we just want to keep having fun, you know? It's like how you keep playing the game and it's how we've been doing well recently. Well, thank you, Dogman. I look forward to hearing the screaming on comms check, which will probably happen. But for now, back to you, Semler next. Uh, yeah, Dogman definitely hopes not. Definitely hopes not, but <laughs> there you have it. That's, all, that's what it's all about. It's when you're going into the Widow, you need the confidence. When you're playing as a team, you need the confidence. If letting loose a little bit is what gets Atlanta, win, you know, Atlanta into that mindset that yep. they know they can get the job done, 
good on them. And they all believe in each other too. And now if Chengdu loses to San Francisco Shock, they don't be locked in at least the top 12. I think there's still a chance, outside chance, that they can get to the top six. They've got a relatively easy schedule going forward. Boston and Dallas, you pretty much just check the W right there. London, you never know if they're going to show up to play or not. So they could actually finish out the stage super strong and get into that top six. It's, I'm still, even after last season and everything, I'm still a little bit of a Dallas fanboy. So when you just like check the win box, I'm like, did you not watch Dallas yesterday? I, I, know, know, I, I, know I watched Hex. Dallas yesterday. I know, heck, but <laughs> let's go. Let's take a look at our player of the match, owned by HP and Erster. Yeah, Erster has done everything that this team requires of him. He plays the Genji when they need it. I think like they had a couple of blades that pretty much just got them where they needed to go. Got them first point, definitely got them second point. He's just a blade bot. Uh, then his Mei has been serviceable. I think that's still a question on this team of if you want to run Mei and you want to run Hanzo, it's it's not look great for them. There's still some things to clear up for Atlanta, but Erster has that carry potential. This was ridiculous. Coming back with the Doom Fist, he gets four kills just to close out the map. If they don't get that very last push, then that last map could have gone very, very differently. So Erster plays the Mei, plays the Genji, plays the Hanzo, plays everything that they need yeah. from this team, has been a, a shining star here. And good job on the squad for being able to scout him out and get him on this team. Yeah, one of the few players who is capable of hard carrying his team. Mm -hmm. That's what we've seen from him. Nearly lost our minds last time cast the Atlanta. They look so good. And Arster just was a beast. But now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our season standings real quick before we move on to the next match of the day. And as far as things are looking here for the Atlanta Reign, they're in that eighth yeah. position. Well, I mean, they're in the eighth spot, but look at this. They only have played 25 matches. They've got three more matches to go. I mean, if they take care of their own business and then some other people falter, which completely possible yep. they could get in that top six spot they wouldn't even have to play in the play-ins right now so atlanta just win the games ahead of you don't worry about anybody else they can get a little bit of help today to lock in their top 12 and then they can play as loosey-goosey as they want and maybe still get in the top six well, i'm excited to see more from atlanta rain because that's a match that they must win if they are going to have a chance at making it into the playoffs like that you got to show what you're capable of you got to show you have the chops atlanta they did that today we're not done yet here in the blizzard arena we're going to be getting into, into our second match of the day chungdu hunters versus san francisco shock coming up after the break The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. 